If you keep that rule of thumb in mind, anytime you're doing anything with a chill water system, whether you're loading the machine up, opening, closing valves, slowing down and speeding up your pump, changing your flow. Hey guys, it's John with the chillerguyshub.com and today we're gonna to be going through setting up the building automation system when you have a constant primary and a variable secondary chill water system. I had a guy from our group message me and say that he was having issues with understanding a primary secondary and how you set it up on the control side. So I figured I would go ahead and make a video about it because I'm sure he's not the only one that had the same question. First, we're gonna be running through how it's supposed to work. Then we're gonna be running you guys through the setup of the pumps and the pressure differential transducer. Then we're gonna be running through what the system should look like going into occupied mode and what the system should look like going into unoccupied mode. And at the end of the video, I'm gonna be giving you guys a rule of thumb that you should keep in the back of your mind whenever you are setting up an automation system to control a chiller. I would say the biggest problem that guys have on new startups has to do with the control side of things. So I'm gonna be making a bunch more videos like this and some more training like this on the website. All right, let's get into it. So the way that this works is actually pretty straightforward. Your primary pump is just the pump that circulates the water through the chiller. Your secondary pump is just the pump that circulates the water through the system. If you can see the primary pump here, essentially it's making just a big circle. So it's pumping into the chiller, out of the chiller, and then back through that decoupler line. You can also just call it a bypass line, but the proper terminology for most manufacturers is a decoupler. So essentially it just makes a big circle all the time, just back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, until the secondary pump fires up and starts pumping chill water to the coils or to your load. And so what it does is it lowers the pressure on the inlet of the secondary pump. And instead of flowing through the decoupler now, it's gonna start flowing through the secondary pump out to your system. And the only thing keeping it from constantly recirculating all the time is physics. So when your secondary pump starts, say one valve is open or 33%, that remaining 66% is just gonna keep getting returned through that decoupler line, right back to the chiller all the time, 24 seven. And as soon as the second chill water valve opens, now your secondary pump is gonna be moving 66% of the water and your chiller is only going to be bypassing 30% of the water or 33% of the water back to the chiller. Then the same is true when you open up that final valve. So when you open up your last valve, 100% of the water is going to be going to your system. And there's going to, ideally in a perfect world, there's going to be nothing going back to the chiller through that decoupler line. It's just going to be all going out to your system and returning through your system. In the real world, sometimes you need to add a bypass valve. Sometimes contractors will install an actual bypass valve to help control this because of piping arrangements, because of pressure drop. Maybe the secondary pump is not sized correctly because typically the secondary pump is going to need to be quite a bit larger than the primary pump just because there's more restriction through the piping and it's got to make its way all the way out to that last unit. But essentially that's how the system is supposed to work. All right, so the fundamentals of operating a system like this are pretty straightforward. So you have a primary pump and you have a secondary pump. Your primary pump's sole purpose is to maintain chill water flow through the chiller. And the secondary pump's primary purpose is to maintain chill water flow through the fan coil units or your air handlers or whatever load you are serving. The best way to set up your primary pump is to just let the chiller control your primary pump. So if it's on a VFD, the chiller is going to have a start-stop output on its controller. So look in the schematic, you'll find the start-stop contact, and you will just set that up to your VFD to start it. Then when there's a demand for cooling, the chiller will call for the evap pump to run. It'll start the evaporator pump, go through its recirculation, and then it'll start up after it's proved the head flow. And then you'll go into the VFD, and you will set the frequencies at the speed based off of the chiller's pressure drop. So you'll take the inlet and outlet pressure across your evaporator, take a look in the book or take a look in the design sheet, and it will tell you what the design pressure drop for the chiller is during operation. So say the chiller is designed for a three PSI drop during operation, you will speed up or slow down that pump VFD to make sure you maintain that two to three PSI during operation. And you'll set this up preliminarily and then as you progress through the commissioning, you will go back and verify that that reading didn't change after you configured the rest of your automation system. So like I said before, the purpose of your secondary pump is to maintain chill water flow through the system. 
So the way you monitor that is with a differential pressure transducer. So as your chill water valves at the air handlers open and close, it's going to increase and decrease the differential pressure across your system. So the BAS will pick this up with your differential pressure transducer and in return it should be sending a command to the VFD for your secondary pump to increase its speed to account for that and run its speed back up until it reaches your differential pressure set point. So your differential pressure transducer is supposed to be piped in between the supply and the return side of the system and it's supposed to be furthest away from the pump to get an accurate reading. But a majority of the time you'll find it piped right next to your pump or close to your pump. So when you're trying to find out what your set point should be for your system, you should be setting a rough set point, going and checking your furthest air handler, the pressure drop on the water side across your air handler, comparing that to the design sheet, making sure that you are meeting design flow, and then base your set point based off of that. Your air handler might be rated for a five or 10 pound drop in order to get the capacity that it's designed for, but you might have to actually set your pump set point at 10 or 15 psi in order to actually make sure that you're getting that 5 psi drop if your pressure transducer is located right next to the pump so your automation system is going to monitor your differential pressure and it's going to speed up or slow down the secondary pump based on your differential pressure and i just want to make a, another note on the decoupler line like I said, the most common way that you will see more than likely is going to be with a control valve in the decoupler line. It's going to need to be set up when you guys are commissioning the system for the first time. So typically the way they set that up is they will slowly close off that decoupler valve as they speed up the secondary pump. So as the secondary pump gets closer to 100%, the control valve on the decoupler line will slowly close off to 0%. And this is very common but it's gonna to need to be fine tuned when you're setting it up, depending on what valve you selected for the application. And to make sure you maintain your chill water flow through the entire range of operation. So you wanna make sure that the chiller's not gonna get starved for water the entire time it's running from zero to 100%. And it's gonna take some time to get this fine tuned, but it is really important that it is fine tuned. So take the time to make sure you do it right. That's not something we're gonna talk about in this video, but it will be in some more trainings and stuff that we put out in the future. We're just not gonna get so in depth in this video. So what it's gonna look like going into occupied mode is the automation system is gonna send the start command of the chiller. And at the same time, it's gonna be opening up the bypass or decoupler valve, and then also running your secondary pump based off differential pressure. More than likely your secondary pump's gonna run up to 100% right away because your system's already gonna be into a hot pull down and all the air handlers are gonna be calling for 100% cooling, more than likely. All right, unoccupied mode. So this is where a majority of your problems happen. This is where you get nuisance low suction pressure trip alarms. This is where you get nuisance flow loss alarms and a lot of controls guys and a lot of technicians get hung up here because they forget the fundamentals. So what seems to happen on a lot of jobs is the building will go into unoccupied mode and everything will shut off at the exact same time because they think the building's done cooling, we can just turn it on and off like a thermostat like you'd have at home on your air conditioner. But that's not the case. Whenever you are turning down a system or ramping up a system, you shouldn't be making more than a 10% change in load or flow over a 10 minute period. If you keep that rule of thumb in mind, anytime you're doing anything with a chill water system, whether you're loading the machine up, opening and closing valves, slowing down and speeding up your pump, changing your flow, if you keep that 10% over 10 minutes in mind, you're never gonna have any problems with your machine on the flow side, and your machine's gonna be extremely reliable. So, keeping that in mind, when you go into unoccupied mode, you need to stage the air handlers off. You can't just shut all the air handlers off at the exact same time or you're gonna lose flow. Or if your machine's run at 100% and you just feed it 100% bypass water, you're gonna be shocking that machine and you're not gonna give the machine time to unload and shut down properly. And it's gonna be tripping out on you every single time. And you're gonna come in in the morning, it's gonna be tripped out, you're gonna reset it, fire it up, your building's doing a hot pull down, so all the valves are open, everything's rocking and rolling and the thing runs great all day. And then you go home that night and you come back in the morning, it's tripped out again and you can't figure out why. So you call a service technician. Service technician comes out, the machine's running great, there's no problems. 
he didn't think to look at the trend data or the automation and boom he leaves call back same problem again so it's really really important that you keep this in mind and don't make any changes more dramatic than a 10 percent change in flow or load over a 10 minute period if you keep that in mind you bring everything down slowly bring everything up slowly you're not gonna have any problems and the machine is gonna run great if you guys like this video, please like and subscribe so we can keep making more content like this. If you're interested in more chiller training and networking with other chiller technicians, check out our website, thechillerguyshub.com, and we'll see you later.